We have a small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone and a bright region emerges on the Earth-facing disk and it's from Solar Cycle 25. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week has been a bit calm, but it's beginning to pick up a little bit. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see there's a small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone. Now this coronal hole we've actually seen probably the last three or four rotations. In fact, it actually did bring us up to storm levels at least a couple of times, but unfortunately now it's beginning to close, so we're not really going to see the kind of fast solar wind that we've seen from it in the past. It has bumped us up to active conditions uh, for a few hours, but it's really looking like it's already beginning to subside. This means we've got aurora at high latitudes, but you a mid-latitude aurora photographers, you're likely going to have to sit this one out. Now, after this coronal hole rotates through the Earth strike zone, there's really not a lot else going on, except if you look at the east limb in the northern hemisphere, look at that bright region that's beginning to rotate into Earth view. This region actually is a new region from the new solar cycle and for just a brief moment it actually did become a sunspot you can actually see it in white light now unfortunately it looks like this region's already beginning to dim a little bit so i doubt it's going to get a new designation from noaa however it did for just a fraction of a moment become a sunspot and that is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders who are begging for solar cycle 25 to hurry up and come on well, this is another sign that yet it is coming along. And as we switch to our backside sun, you can see that region as it began to really kind of evolve starting late on the 17th and early into the 18th. Now, you, again, you can kind of see it beginning to diminish just a little bit, but we are going to keep our eyes on it because it could potentially boost the solar flux a little bit and increase the dayside propagation for all of you uh, HF operators. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase, and by the 22nd, the moon will only be about 20% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are dealing with that small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone now and sending us a little bit of fast wind, but it's not really all that impressive of a show. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 35% chance of a major storm, and this should last in through the beginning of the weekend before things begin to settle down. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 30% chance of active conditions. Now we've already seen active conditions, but you know, things are beginning to wane already. So unfortunately, it looks like Aurora Show will probably be limited to high latitudes and mid latitudes Aurora photographers. I hate to say it, but you're probably going to have to sit this one out. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a spotless sun right now, so you GPS users, you should be very happy. You should have great uh, reception on Earth's day side. But we do have a bright region from solar cycle 25 that is gracing the east face of our, of our sun right now, and that does mean that the solar flux continues to be a little bit boosted. We are now in the low 70s and that means we're in the marginal range for radio propagation so amateur radio operators and emergency responders you should be well maybe not loving life but at least getting a little hope that solar cycle 25 is getting closer and closer you are managing to stay in the marginal range and this is you know i hate to say it but it's actually pretty good news now unfortunately we're not there yet we are still at solar minimum so you frequent flyers and this does include the air crew who are flying over 800 hours annually and flying at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are still in the moderate range for radiation dose because of those cosmic rays. They are penetrating further into our atmosphere than they normally would if the sun were more active. So you're going to need to take this into consideration in your flight plans, and this does include prenatal passengers. So everyone, be safe. 
So the space weather this week is definitely picking up just a little bit. We do have a small coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone now, and it is bringing us a little bit of fast solar wind, but it's not really that huge a show. We have reached active conditions, and we might even get some more disturbance, especially at high latitudes. So your aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you could definitely enjoy a show for a little bit longer, but you mid-latitude aurora photographers, I hate to say it, but you got the solar minimum blues and you're most likely going to have to sit this one out until maybe even more activity picks up again. Now amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you guys should definitely have a smile on your face because we have yet another indicator of solar cycle 25 that's coming. We have a bright region that is rotated into the earth uh, facing sun and we do see that it actually has a sunspot in white light. Now granted this little sunspot probably isn't going to last very long so don't hold your breath but it is still enough to boost that solar flux and keep us in the marginal range for radio propagation on Earth's day side so enjoy and expect the trend to continue to go upwards very slowly but definitely upwards now do you GPS users you know, these tiny solar storms that we're getting that are just really more disturbances than anything, these are really good. They stabilize the upper atmosphere for you. And with the low solar flux that we've been having recently, that also means even at low latitudes, your GPS reception should be pretty good. So really, all around the globe, GPS reception should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.